I am a huge fan of mobile church. Maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment, but I enjoy the flexibility of an environment that is constantly changing, for the better, ideally. And I enjoy building those systems to make life easier for everybody that is making that setup happen week to week. It's just fun for me. So two examples, I spent the summer of 2022 setting up mobile church every week at a park with my brothers and two other families to make church happen every Sunday. We set up a sound system, my LED pixel wall, and a large tent that kept most everyone out of the elements. The second example is setting up for our weekly college ministry gatherings at shelters for Newbridge Church in Wheeling, West Virginia. I love those days. You can actually look at a video on my channel of that uh, setup at the shelter. The LED pixels wall, the lights clamped to the beam, the LED lyric strip hanging, and we had a full band for those gatherings, and it was just so much fun getting this set up with friends and making it happen every week. I'm currently working at a church in Canton, Ohio as the production director. And last semester, our college ministry started doing worship each week during their Monday night gatherings. Not exactly mobile church, but it happens in our multi-purpose room, so it's basically the same thing. The first weeks looked like us carrying everything in and setting it all up. We had a full drum kit, we had the piano, we had power, we had XLRs everywhere. Every week, we had to unpack closets to pull out all the gear needed to have the worship band on stage. But wait, there's more, because there's always more. We also had to rehearsal night a different night of the week. I know we're kind of crazy, but, but really this means that all of that needed set up twice each week. So back to my love for building systems. On the first day of this, I was already asking myself, okay, what sort of systems can we put in place to make this process easier? I knew this was not sustainable. I'm a systems guy. Of course I'm looking for shortcuts to make our lives easier. You already saw the thumbnail. So you know that we built rolling platforms to roll the band gear in and out of the room from our third room, our L43 room, that is mostly for storage, but it has these big walls that open up. It's amazing. So that's where this is headed. And it was a genius move. The best part is we only spent $350 per four by eight foot platform. Hi, I'm Nathan, if we haven't met, and welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs. My goal here is to train and educate leaders to do church and event production with excellence. I'm also the production director at a church in Canton, Ohio, and me and my team do all of the sound, graphics, streaming, and lighting for church on Sundays. We also support all of the ministries and their different production-related needs throughout our facility and even outside our facility sometimes. So the platforms are fantastic. More on those in a bit because there were other systems built along the way. We needed in-ear monitors, so I dug up the old Avium system from the closets, and I found a small road case in the closet, and I reconfigured it by adding the Avium Power Over Ethernet network switch so that we could connect the Avium mixers to it inside of the rack. This kept everything so nice and neat. I also added a drawer in there to store things, as well as an audio interface to connect the iPad running our playback app for the multi-tracks. So with a road case, it's important that everything connects to the front. It's at least easier in this case to deploy everything when you don't even have to open up the back panel. So I got as many connections readily available from the front. So power to the rack mount power that powers everything was connected from the back, but I pulled it to the front. The USB connection from the audio interface, which connects to the iPad, I pulled that to the front. We also had XLR audio cables that are connected via quarter inch on the back of the audio interface. And then I connected those to the wall, to the patch panel. And unfortunately, we only ended up using two audio channels from the interface to the wall because we were limited on our I.O. Finally, I connected a short ethernet cable from the input on the Avium switch to the ethernet port on the wall that I added to the wall port. This port runs up the wall, over the drop ceiling, and down into a rack that sits in the back closet where the analog mixer is located. So I added the Avium analog to digital converter box to that rack in the back of the room. This has two eight channel quarter inch snakes connecting the channels from the inserts on the analog mixer to the Avium converter box. The ethernet cable from the front of the room connects to that box and sends its data to the Aviums on stage so that each personal mixer can get 16 channels of audio. They all connect quickly and easily to that ethernet switch that's also power over ethernet to connect 
connect power to the devices. So the Avion system worked surprisingly well for the time that we used it. The majority of our issues were keeping the insert connected just right on the back of the rack mounted mixer so that the audio was sent out of the mixer to the Avion, but it also remained in the house mix. We also got pretty serious radio interference in one of the analog channels running through the snake from the patch panel on the wall to the mixer, and one of them actually stopped working at one point, so then there were only six channels available. Tragic. The use of tracks through the iPad playback app worked really well through the audio interface in the rack. The instruments were sent to one output and the click, then cues were sent to two other channels. We kept instruments in the iPad app muted to keep it from becoming overwhelming. So as much many instruments as possible, we kept them down. As we began this weekly setup process, I started a running list of upgrade ideas that we could possibly do to make this space excellent for the college students who are finding community here at our church, but also to cut down on our hours of setup twice per week. So I looked at this list and decided that our need for a stage display screen was some of the lowest hanging fruit that we can quickly move on. The very first Thursday that we did rehearsal before the first gathering that Monday that we did worship, we rolled in one of the TV cards and placed it in the back of the room to use as a stage display screen. This was an easy solution for a stage display, easy to set up and run wires to. Then once there were people in the room, we realized that the screen was not high enough for the band to actually see it over people's heads. So during the next week, we mounted a TV on the wall. We ran power to install an outlet and ran a 15 foot HDMI cable up and over and down the wall to connect it to the computer. And just like that, we now have a fantastically located stage display screen that is now available and easy to use by anyone in this multi-purpose space. It has a dedicated HDMI, so if you have the correct setup, it's easy to send a dedicated stage display to this TV. The second biggest upgrade idea was to build platforms with wheels that the band gear could remain set up on, and then the goal was to keep everything on the platforms, then we could just roll the platforms in and out of the third L room for rehearsal and then to set up for the Monday night gatherings. And this worked because there is a third room that opens up and it doesn't usually get used, so it has become a temporary storage room. I designed the platforms in Fusion 360, and they're super simple, the design is at least. It took five two by four by eight boards, one sheet of half inch OSB board. We used four by fours in each corner, and then in the center to secure the two by fours, we just used three inch star bit screws to connect the corners to the four by fours. I made a list of all of the materials that we needed and had some drawings from the 3D model from Fusion 360. I created this list and I sent it to our facilities team who actually went and purchased everything and then they built them. Those guys are literally fantastic. We weren't sure if the two wheels in the center would be necessary, but once we got some weight and someone jumped on it, they said it moved too much for comfort. So now with six wheels per platform, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's absolutely rock solid. And that's really nice, especially for the ones with the drum kit on it, because there's quite a bit of weight on there. And, and you go like this drumming, you don't want the thing to be going like this, it's kind of sketchy. We had some ideas for fancy mechanisms to connect the platforms together, but in the end, simplicity is usually the best solution. I purchased these six inch clamps on Amazon and we're just clamping the two four by eight foot platforms together and it has worked really well. They are wood, so not the most attractive thing. I looked online for a 12 inch skirt with Velcro to go around the platforms, and I discovered that just like the stage pieces available for purchase, the skirting is also very expensive. So I purchased a 12 inch black bed skirt from Amazon and I stapled it to the platform. This 16 foot skirt stretches around the three important sides of the platform. They look very nice and cost a fraction of the price of the real skirt, I guess. For the surface of the platform, I purchased a garage floor mat from Home Depot, but the sizing was off. Like it was longer in the one direction and it wasn't wide enough. So it just really did not fit very well on the platforms. I ended up returning those and replacing them with two foot carpet tiles. Those are super easy to install and they just bring the whole thing and make it look so nice. I might add some staples in the future, but we'll see. They're holding up really well. 
We've been using these platforms every week for several weeks now and we absolutely love them. The drum kit lives on the one eight by eight foot platform and it's so nice to just have it set up and not have to touch it. That rack I talked about earlier lives in the corner of the drum platform and all of the connections are there on the wall. The other platform has our keys and our acoustic player on it and we're just using the four by eight foot platform for that, just a single four by eight to clarify. We realized that the four by eight was enough room, so I just left the second piece off because the other one is really big. As you can expect, this has dramatically improved our setup and tear down time, dramatically reducing the amount of time it takes to get everything set up because everything lives on the cards. Large instruments, Avion mixers and stands, mics, DI boxes, music stands and mic stands, everything lives on the platforms and then we even add more stuff to the platforms before we roll it into the other room, which is great because then when we roll it back out, the, roughly the stuff that we put around the platform goes roughly around the platform. To tear down when we're done, we simply unplug the wires from the patch panel on the wall, and then roll them up to where they're gonna go on the carts. This means to set up, we just grab the coil of wire from the cart, walk to the wall, we plug it in and connect it to the proper port on the patch panel. Same with the ethernet cables for the Aviums. They all stay connected to their mixer and then they roll the connection to the switch and the rack on the drum cart. It's really nice. This whole system is currently in the middle of an overhaul as I've gotten approval to purchase the beginnings of a decent mobile sound system for our church. This new system is going to contain an X32 rack mixer and stage box with some networking pieces and P16s to replace the Aviums. A part of that new equipment is the purchase of two eight port stage snakes that are each gonna live on the cart. So the idea is to leave the box on the cart, plug all the instruments. I'm really loving the one for the drum kit because all the mics are plugged into there and then we just unwrap the coil sitting on the cart back and plug it into the stage box and then everything is ready to go. We've actually been using a lot of this gear for several weeks now and it's been a fantastic upgrade. So I'm gonna have a second video to look at those changes in detail shortly in the future. If you're interested in more content like this, then let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. It's so fun to see people subscribe and follow along with the content that I get to make. Making content, the Zoom training calls that I have with people like you are the things that really excite me about this vision, this mission of training and educating leaders to do church and event production with excellence. So I'll see you next time. Bye.